right side, Tariq McGee. Hanyap centers. Not in back toward Golan Fieldberg says thank you very much. A gift from Memphis and Colorado Springs leads. It starts with, as you have Tyreek McGee played centrally, now he has the ability to make these runs, and that's the center back, Turchi, towards the corner flag, so they're all out of shape, and if you're Hanyu, you put the ball in a dangerous area, and you get rewarded. Not Della nearly well enough from Suzoko, gets caught in between two mines, headed back into Henry, you're trying to clear your line. And it's home Tampa Bay, home Charleston, at El Paso, home Loudoun, at Orange County, home San Antonio. Five of their next seven at home. Now it's Fieldberg again. Fieldberg doubles his tally. Two minutes apart. 2 0 Colorado Springs. James Chambers wanted a reaction. Or gets a brace in the matter of eight minutes as Justin Dillon requires so much attention. Again, it's a Zoko. He slips off his line. So now you're asking the players from a deep line position to break their lines with the runs. And just watch the body position between Quezada and the ball. As Henry comes up, he goes, thank you very much, up and over. It's a really clever finish from Fieldberg. Tanya continues to provide for Colorado Springs. Three goals in the season. Now defending a set piece to switch backs. Floated in over everybody, and it's going to be an own goal. One of the weirdest first halves of the season continues on that trend, and it's 2-1. to one. Bit of a hopeful ball from Noe Meza. There's only one person for the Memphis line, a one player. This is Ronaldo Damas' third full season in the USL Championship. 2021 with Orange County, last year with San Diego, this year with, Orange, with Colorado Springs, looking for another double-digit goal season, and he has it. His 10th of the year, and it is 3-1 Colorado Springs. Only a sour way to go down two goals for Memphis. Sigh of relief breathed by Colorado Springs, now up by two. But give credit to Ronaldo Domas, it's his movement that creates the confusion. Starts on the blind side of Tulu and he never sees him at the last second. That's when he cut, cuts a... Does the breakthrough come on a set piece? Diaz, header, Dwyer! His first for the roots! And Oakland takes the lead over the top team in the West! What a moment to open his Oakland scoring account. Just mentioned it when he came on the field. What a brilliant opportunity this was for Dom Dwyer. These are professionals. They, they want to end this season on a positive note and early. Cabral the header, Seattle the first stop, the second one finds some twine. Siaha's not happy about it. Frankie Lopez will take credit in the 48th minute. Miami FC on the board, 1-0. And it just showcases the positive start that Miami FC had played with. What a terrific win there by Knutson on that delivery. And then that opportunistic nature of Miami FC, Cardona getting a touch on it here, affecting the ability of Siaha to get a clean grasp of it. And Frank Lopez. Logan Neidlinger has made his way to the Indy 11 bench. In the first league match, he's appeared as a sub in a while. He had started the last four they had played. We saw him in the second half against Sporting Kansas City as well. Ball headed down and in. And Pittsburgh is in front. 
playing a man down for nearly 70 minutes. The River Hounds have taken the lead. What a strike. My goodness. Great ball served in. And then brilliant. I love that ball. When you don't think you can put it on frame with any kind of pace and be dangerous, to head that ball back across the box and give somebody else a chance. It's a great serve. Between Aiden Quinn and Mario Williams. Both looking for a first for Indy this year. Williams. Wow! wow! Man up from heaven for the Indy 11. Romario finally breaks free. 1-1. One, one. And sometimes a draw feels like a win. And that's what it's going to feel like tonight for the Indy 11. What a strike. You can see the frustration release on Romario Williams. He's had some opportunities to score earlier that were. Maybe a counter brewing here. Marcus Epps tried to step through Levi's. Direct ball sent in. Bryant trying to catch up to it. Headed down and across in. And it's in the back of the net for Hartford Athletic. And the goal will stand. Boy, beautiful execution. What an effort by Mishi Angelina. And then the finish on the other end. And there's that guy again, Mamadou Jang. You see, hey, do how about that back heel then gets it back? You see, hey, do to Ben Morris. And we're level at one. Ben Morris to finish. Laurent Kissier do the setup. And we're right back where we started. Electricity here at Keyword. What did, what did we just see? Dave? That was incredible. For me, that's just the dynamism of Kissier do the way he was able to spring Ben Morris. A great finish from a hot. You make an excellent point. For some reason, Maldonado looks like he's going to wave off to Costa. He's not, though. The Costa's going to finish. And how about North Carolina FC? De Costa with a wonder goal. Wow! Just as you were saying, Dean, you had a feeling today that Rodrigo da Costa was going to score. And boy, were you right. Look what it means to him. Unbelievable free kick. Absolute perfection. Up and over the wall, whips it, pace. No chance for Damien Lass in the goal for Louisville. And the Brazilian boy... Another corner kick coming, wide open, tapper in, that easy. When you come out and you don't get it, and you leave Jansen Wilson wide open, that's how you can tie this game up pretty quickly, and that's what's happened. We're tied at 1-1. Congratulations to Louisville City FC. Just a complete breakdown at the back. It's a great ball from Serrano. Ask the question, but there's four or five blue shirts right in the middle of that six-yard box. Along with the goalkeeper, Jake McGuire. And it'll be it's September. Can you believe it? And then they'll go to the next station. <laughs> September. <laughs> Can you believe it? <laughs> Left side, Ezra Armstrong. Ezra, good weight on it!
Absolutely stunning, Dean. Colin Martin involved here, Rodrigo da Costa feeds it out to Ezra Armstrong, who's got the freedom of the left side of Wake Med Soccer Park. The absolute peach of a cross to Oleg Anderson Jr., who does. Whipped across. Headed first by Rafa. Ezra Armstrong goes off his thigh. Sent back in and oh, it's in. Deflected goal. And Maguire can't get to it. I think it went off Craig. And it's 2-2. We'll take another look at it. Was it Craig? Yeah. The captain trying to get his head on it to keep it out and inadvertently steered it into the bottom corner as Maguire was moving the other way. It's a poor clearance from Armstrong initially and then Davila whips in a delicious ball and Craig just trying to get it away just glances it in at the near post. Still loose and another sitter. There was... Yeah, they're going to count it. And it's the second sitter right there for Jansen Wilson that somehow just sneaks through. And there's Jansen Wilson. All of a sudden, they got a little bit cloudy, but he's still able. I didn't want to say it because I'm starving. <laughs> it's good food at Alpaca. Corner kick coming. Flicks, far post, yes! And how about North Carolina FC? Did Paco Craig get it back? Was it Craig or Adams? I mean, the cameraman's telling me all day long here that it's Adams that's got the last touch, but let's take a look. It's a great ball in. Now, yeah, you can see clearly off the side of Adams' head. So two own goals. Two goals for Jansen Wilson. A Rodrigo da Costa free kick. Costa, look at that. Ezra Armstrong. That might have been a nutmeg. Ezra Armstrong knows how to find Olex Anderson Jr. perhaps better than anybody on the team. Ezra Armstrong... Now drops it to Olex Anderson Jr. Olex Anderson Jr. trying to find the angle. Oh my! And how about North Carolina FC? Anderson has two. That's a bad man. That is a bad man. <laughs> Look at him. If he had a mic, they'd be hitting the floor right now. Incredible. All the way from their own corner flag. Louis Perez, great touch from DaCosta. This left flank has been deadly for the home team. Here we go. Wilson Harris has tied it 4-4. Louisville City FC. Penalty kick taken. Penalty kick made. Wilson Harris ties it at fours. What a game. My 5-5 prediction now, Dean's looking really poor, right? I'm going to have a word with myself. We're on course for 7-7. Seven, seven. Full credit to Wilson Harris, though. As we said, missed a couple of absolute sitters in the first. Flag stays down. Big opportunity here for Louisville City FC, and they'll finish it. That's what they do. Louisville City FC has scored again. Wilson Harris with back-to-back -back goals. He's got a brace, and it's 5-4. Louisville City FC on top. And here it is. Good play. Link-up play with McFadden and Jansen Wilson. And then it's Wilson Harris. His little look at the lines when he's onside. And expertly lifts it over Maguire's outstretched right hand. That touch just teased Maguire to go to ground. And then... Corner kick coming. Loose City FC. Headed by Craig. Shot from distance and in. Just like that. And I believe it's That's the hat trick. Wilson, yeah. <laughs> Wilson with a hat trick. Jansen Wilson's got three of the six. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Look at those Loose City fans. They've made the trek down here.
Labor Day weekend. Corners, of course, problems all day long. Paco Craig's header is not a bad one. Oh, it flicks off the... Is that off the back of Paco Craig? Surely not. I think it is. Oh, my... Jake Maguire was... Sometimes just time and amount of time on the field can lead to coaches making those kind of decisions to not play a player in the following match despite being on the bench. As Cuisera places that centrally. Ibarra back into the middle, it's in! The moment arrives, it's Steven Turnbull who scores for Rhode Island and celebrates with a... Massive jump into the seats at Burns Stadium. Rhode Island break the deadlock, and Stephen Turnbull is engulfed by the Rhode Island Ultras. It's 1 0. And it's just the perfect timing of the substitution. Williams comes into the game, he gets the pivotal touch that creates this opportunity for Turnbull. You're least expecting. And be a little bit more offensive, effective offensively. Quizera from the corner, it's in! It's a thumping header from J.J. Williams to settle the match. Rhode Island doubles their delight in stoppage time and they will continue their pole vault up the Eastern Conference table. What an impact Williams has had since he's come into the game. We spoke about his defensive contributions and offensive contributions. He's coming to the game, he's got an assist, and he's also got himself on the score sheet. You have to give him credit for his mentality since he's come off the bench. Maybe if you're a player like Williams, you're a little bit annoyed that you're not starting games given his legacy. Below dispossessed. Now Gabby getting his first touches in the other direction. So Hernandez, the other substitute. Long ball forward is a good one for Margarita. Gerald Margarita on his left, it's deflected and in! Phoenix take the lead in the 84th minute on the road! And Gerald Margarita, in his second match, in his first start, makes it 1-0. And the two substitutes having an impact as well, both had the two passes before that. To open up the chance for Margarita. He found himself in a little soft spot. Ooh, it got caught up field. There's still plenty of work to do by Margarita. Just let rip. And until I think of Zach Ryan helping back. Oh, and Agudelo able to create a little separation into the box. What Agudelo drops it off. San Antonio FC with the first strike for Jorge Hernandez. Jorge Hernandez, the play creator, and in this case, the play finisher. Marcina has been trying to get him up in the attack, and he was at the right place at the right time. And a big part of that started with Juan Agudelo. He read the ball. He did a stab here. He took his time, and it was just the perfect pace on it. The diving finish here from Jorge Hernandez. Torres! A Galasso from Juan Davi Torres and Charleston Battery has leveled the match in the 84th minute. Fourth goal to the stat sheet there for Juan Davi Torres. And look at this Golasso. Holds no prisoners, no mercy, just out of reach there of Gongora. Really nothing you could have. Just put the ball in the mixer, go win your battle. Tried on training, but wouldn't execute enough. Good ball. Hegart drives inside as the option wide plays. Jameson cuts it through. Ball popped out to Zubak, blasted by Hegart. Comes back out to Kasipli. Hangs that in. Zubak brought it down. Zubak!
fantastic stuff from Orange County. Starts with Hagar, the patience to let Jamison come around the corner. Top priority there is to make your defender engage, but as this ball comes back across, you don't turn off mentally. Fantastic technique from Kasimpli, but it's a clever finish from Zubak. Number one, to keep yourself onside is one thing. It's a completely different thing to have that. Aligns with Smart. Dunbar continues. Now drives the cross. Hagar is there. Hagar pulls through. Pulls back. Across. Zubak! <laughs> Orange County is exercising demons. 19th minute. It is 2-0. Both from Zubak. Top class from Orange County. It starts with the build out of the back, but look how quickly they draw in this Las Vegas light side and they play wide. And now you're asking Dunbar to go 1v1 and express himself. And you talk about confidence, the composure, the patience to let this play develop. And in doing that, Mike, now you afford the players around you to get into more advantageous opportunity. Chris Hagar, experienced player, understands if I continue my run and play wide, now I have every single player in a white jersey. Corey Bennett scores! Set Shuttler diving the wrong way. And Las Vegas, as they have all year, resilient right back in the mix. And Gondo, good slip ball ahead! Equalizer, Las Vegas, Bennett, 2-2. Brace for Zubak. Bennett responds with a brace of his own. Two. Slide in, nothing doing, across, and in! How did that sneak inside? And Vaughn Koval, just his second appearance, bags his first lights goal on the road. And from two goals down, Vegas leads. And the San Diego native pulling the lights out of the doldrums. Again, just a bit too casual for Orange County. Trying to overcomplicate things. As this ball comes back across, really well done yet again from Charlie Adams, who's been the best player for the Las Vegas Lights. Peek over his right shoulder, a bit of an awkward deflection from Nakam. But give credit to, give it's a credit to Koval. You put the ball in a dangerous area and you get rewarded Do you think it's and you know, we noted that with just with Mario Sanchez coming in, obviously pleased with the performance, but wanting to come in aggressive, wanting to stay disciplined. There's the ball into the ball, real chance here, and it's been looped into the goal. It's a goal early here for Jairo Enriquez. Peñaranda got a hand on it, and Jairo Enriquez, with only one goal before tonight, gets his second, and with just two minutes gone, it is FC Tulsa nil, Colorado Springs Switchbacks FC one. Head coach James Chambers for the opposition coming in one. The Checo got round one, but he couldn't get round Lacroix, who tidies up for the Switchbacks. Neat play finds Zandi. There's a late challenge from Seagrass. Referee might come back to that. Here's Damas round the keeper. Damas is going to make it two. That is a wonderful finish. He drew Peñaranda out of his goal. Took him out of the picture at a quality finish just inside the right-hand post. 37th minute here, and it is FC Tulsa nil. The switchbacks two. Great work from the switchbacks. They'll be pleased here to extend their lead, almost heading into halftime. But Domus to keep his composure here. Pena Ronda coming out with force, trying to really narrow his angle and make it difficult but 
has a great first touch there around Pena Ronda, and then that's not an easy finish. Has an odd angle, has to put that back on frame with defender. Finds Lasso. Lasso round two, can't go round the third. Great run from Lacroix into the area here. Could it be a third? It is a third. And Duke Lacroix has scored an outstanding goal. He sprinted down the right-hand side. Nobody went to shut him down. He put it onto his left foot and curled it into the back of the net. And in injury time, it is FC Tulsa nil, Colorado Springs switchbacks FC three. Lacroix here with the change of pace. FC Tulsa's defenders did not step to him and he took full advantage. And you saw Delmas there trying to pull his run back to give an option. Corner kick to be taken by Aiden Rocha, who puts his arms out wide. He did that in the first half. Here's the ball into the near post. It's flicked on and in. And it's Matt Mahoney, I think. No, it, excuse me, it's Matthew Real who got the flick on. It was a beautiful corner in from that left-hand side from Rocha. What a delivery. What a header. Daylight between the two teams. 69 minutes gone here. FC Tulsa nil. Colorado Springs switchbacks FC four. The switchbacks continuing to apply the pressure, as we've mentioned, to this FC Tulsa defense that has just not able to find a response. Great corner kick in. You see it's the front post run from Bibu, this is a consolation for FC Tulsa. Secrets has perhaps come the closest for FC Tulsa tonight. Pierre away. Booth will drive one towards goal, takes a deflection and does go in. And Mahoney is annoyed. But FC Tulsa at last have a goal. It's a consolation. It's deep into stoppage time. It is FC Tulsa 1, Colorado Springs, switchbacks FC 4. Great reaction from the crowd here at One Oak Field who have stuck.